It took some doing, but we got it done. My travel trailer chicken cook conversion is done. I had to let this go for about a week. I got sick about a week ago. I couldn't even get out of bed. But before I could finish it up, we had a leak on the inside corner here. That even though, even after I took care of the top, it was still leaking. So what I did, I had some Flex Seal, a, a can of black Flex Seal with a little bit left in it. I sprayed it in here. Then I bought a new can of Cliff Flex Seal and gave this three coats. Both sides. I went around every one of the windows. By the way, we had some heavy rains this week. Not a drop of water was on the inside. So I was able to finish paneling it off. Like I said, all around these windows, there's a layer of flex seal to clear. This was that opening that I sealed off with um, metal from a dryer, a washer. I'm not sure where this came from now. And I also have up on the roof, there was one of those uh, domes. One I kept, the other one I closed it off. I put a piece of this metal underneath. I used plenty of caulking. Then I used the roof sealer, and I even put the flex seal on top of that. No water came in whatsoever. So all around here, we're good. Flex seal even around here. This is just an open vent. Cool air could get in from there. Now, over here, I have this paneled off on the inside, but I don't have any insulation in here. Come the summertime, I'm probably going to cut the paneling out and um, use this for more ventilation, or I might just leave it. This has plenty of windows, so I might not need it. But all around, this was flex sealed. Uh, this is the roofing material, but I even put the flex seal around here. Flex seal all up and down here. This back corner was ripped out and the metal was played there was no way to work that metal so what I did this gray metal that you see in here this is a piece of shelving this is a piece of shelving that I cut to fit in here I screwed it to some secure beams that were on the inside and it's holding it together and I just put this on top to cover it plenty of uh, plenty of roofing material you can see a little bit of the clear flex seal over here flex seal all the way around all the way around these windows you know what I think I did those lights well we'll see if we get but again I haven't had any water come in and now when we get to this side the same around all the windows plenty of flex seal <sighs> working my way around now what I did with the wiring that was on the inside, I left two outlets and I made a, a double mail pigtail. So I could plug into an extension cord, plug into here, and I could put a light on the inside or a heater if the need should ever arise. Over here, this is the door I was working on. This caused me some grief. I used this metal, this was off the dryer. But what I did, I should have got a flat piece of metal because this metal, to make it fit, I tried to straighten it out and it bows and it bows out, it twisted. So what I did, I screwed this eye bolt in, a little less than the one on the bottom, and you can see I have it at an angle to hold this in. I, got, I have to find a better piece of metal for this. But I don't think anything's gonna lift this up to get inside. Lock. I have to find something different for this. And to secure it on the inside, I put this 2x4 in, where I screwed up from the bottom, towed it into the side, and over here, where the other one is, I put two, put two screws up from the bottom, towed it into this stud here, and this cross member, I have two screws in holding it there. Now before I panel this over, I have to grind out these screws that stuck through the two by four. The other two on the bottom, they're into the main, they're into the main beam that supports the floor. 
I just want to point this out before I close it up to show you how I shorted it up. That's not just into this aluminum. Because we just pull right out then. The Hold these screws. These boys want to get in there. These boys want to get in there, but this is not for them. This is for the hens. So they're going to be a little disappointed. They jumped in quite a few times while I was working on it. So let me get to the inside of this, and I'll show you what we came out with. All right. There's still some odds and ends that have to be done. But like I mentioned earlier, I was sick this week. I was in bed for most of the week, and I have to get these chickens in here. So let me show you what, what I have done for. The rest of it is just some cosmetics. I left this skylight over here. There's another skylight over here. I didn't close it off. I just have the paneling over it. I might open it up in the summertime. I don't know if I need that ventilation. As I mentioned outside, there was the skylight over here and all this wood in here was rotten. So I replaced this wood, closed the skylight with a piece of metal, some caulking, some roofing material, and also some flex seal. And these studs, this is the floorboards. This is the decking. I made like a molding. This is over here just to give this. Yesterday was kind of a perfect storm. My cold acted up on me again, and I didn't have the strength to do anything. And this camera went out in the middle of videoing. So today is the first morning that the girls were in their new coop overnight. I didn't even have a chance to put the bedding down yesterday. Here they are. Oh, they're ready for their food. Okay. What's all this water? Was there a leak in here or was that from that? That. Was this water in here? Did you put this water in this morning? That? No, yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay. Like I mentioned, chickens are flying around. Like I mentioned, I didn't even get a chance to put the bedding down yesterday, and I already got a lot of cleanup to do in here. Hey, girls, how you like your new perches? Huh? How you like your new perches? I have these curtains in the window that I have to take out. I'm just leaving them for now. And I give it a little tickle. Yep. Now, these, these chickens were covered with mud yesterday because the one that they were, okay, you done, John? Watch, watch. No, don't put any more water in there. I don't want to, that, that's too messy, that thing. Looks like it's wet. It's okay, there's water in the other one. Okay. These chickens were covered with mud yesterday because of, the, because of the rain that we had, and they're always out in the run. You can see they're a little cleaner today. Uh -oh. This is mud on this chicken, but I do have some of these girls that chicken, this is mud on this chicken, but I do have a few of these girls that they look like they have mud on them when they're clean. Just their coloring. But they still have quite a bit of mud on them. Well, let me show you what I have here. I think I pointed this out in, in the video last night that I, that I kept this skylight open there's one up in here that i just have this closed off i can always open it up i still have a little trimming to do in here but nothing serious work the reason i left this open this is the front of the trailer and i don't have any paneling on here one it's easier to clean two but, but the main reason is that I want to make the uh, 
But the main reason is that I want to get the nesting boxes to where I can get the eggs from the outside. So I would have to cut this open. I may or may not use this, see how it works. Uh, and then I have a door on the outside where I can get the eggs without having to come inside all the time. This is where the girls will be going out to get to their run. But I'm going to leave them in here for a couple of days without letting them out so they get used to this as being their new home. Now you can see these wires here. See, everything is covered in mud. This wasn't leaking, was it, John? And all this water, where's all this water from? It's all from here? Yeah. Okay, let's not use this for water anymore, okay? Because it's too messy, huh? Okay. Put, hey, John. Yeah? Put that water bucket down a little bit. I think it's a little high for him. No, no, put it, up, put it on the ground there. Let's put it down. There you go. They drank this, out of that. Oh, they drank out of that one? Oh, it was empty? Oh, uh, okay. All right. Now you can see this, how cloudy this water is over here. It's all full of mud from them being outside. And what I use for water is uh, bleach bottles. I try to use something with a heavier plastic on it. Okay. Any eggs in there by any chance, shit, John? One big, one big advantage of having them just into a coop like this is that the eggs will be a lot cleaner. Because if the chickens have mud on them, guess what else gets mud on them? Who? The chickens. The eggs. Okay. They're looking good. We have plenty of, plenty of area for perching. We have plenty of perch area. Once I clean this all out, I might lay some heavy cardboard in here and just use it and going into the deep bedding. This and go is into the, and go into the deep bedding. See how that works out in here. My other chicken coop has a dirt floor, so the deep bedding works great in that one. But I don't know about here with the wooden floor. This is where I covered up the wheel so they don't peck, so they don't pull that uh Insulation apart. Okay, John, let's go. Let them enjoy their breakfast. More in breakfast. Twisted a little bit. Because the door's sticking now. This is what's left of the garden. I'm just letting it overgrow because I'm going to let these chickens out and I'm going to use this for their run. I'm going to get the netting that I have and just cover the top. And I was going to pull these tomato cages out, but I think I'm going to leave them in there just to hold up the netting. Again, my biggest problem during the day are the hawks and an occasional fox will come by. But the hawks are they're ferocious in this area. and. And if it ever dries out, my goal is to get this coop. See where that little coop is up there? That's where I raised them on their babies. In that coop, it has a little blue top on it. But what I'm going to do is drive this coop around and back it into there. And that's where this coop is going to go. The reason it's here now is because right over here on the other side of that chair and rake is a real wet spot. I can't get through it. My truck will sink right down as I pull into it. So, if we could get a couple of weeks of dry weather or push come to shove, if the ground freezes, I'll be able to do that. But for now, this will be their new run. And the boys, we just let them free range. They seem to keep those hawks at bay. It's usually four of them together. Where'd the other guy go? He's around here somewhere. But... And that stack of wood up there, that was the wood I was collecting to build a chicken coop. 
before I got this trailer, my intent was to build a coop back in there. But what I like about the trailer is I can, I can move it to another location if ever I want to change. Uh, there he is. Okay, I'm looking around to see if we see any of those hawks flying around. But so far, nothing. It looks like it might be a nice day today. Yesterday, I left my tools out. I never, never leave my tools out. I didn't have the strength to pick up the boxes. I really didn't. And it wasn't supposed to rain last night, and guess what? It came down. So I'll spend the better part of the today drying off some tools, oiling them up, cleaning them up, and... Hey, Cookie. My total cost for this travel trailer chicken coop conversion was approximately $50. The trailer I picked up on Craigslist, somebody was just getting rid of it. The material was all recycled material. We have a dryer, a wash machine, shelving, discarded decking. What else? TV stand for the uh, nesting box. And the actual monetary expense I had were the screws. I bought $38 worth of screws, which I still have some left, but I used a lot of screws that I had from before. So we'll chalk that up as a $38 cost. And the can of Flex Seal that I did all the seams with again. And that's it. So for $50, I was able to put this chicken coop together. I hope you found this video entertaining, useful, and if so, give it a thumbs up. It does help. Share it with someone else who might find it useful. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Hit that Joe Z button. And until next time, everyone, stay safe.